Hello everyone. This is 3Z. Don't forget subscribe. Nuclear device. An explosive device that derives its destructive power from nuclear reactions, either fission, fission bombs, or a combination of fission and fusion reactions, thermonuclear bombs, producing a nuclear explosion, is referred to as a nuclear weapon. It is also referred to as an atom bomb, atomic bomb, nuclear bomb, or nuclear warhead. Both types of bombs produce a tremendous quantity of energy from a tiny amount of substance. About 20,000 tons of TNT's worth of energy were released during the first fission, or atomic, bomb test, 84TJ. Energy released by the first thermonuclear, hydrogen, bomb test was about equal to 10 million tons of TNT, 42PJ. The W-54 nuclear bomb, with a yield of 10 tons TNT, and the Tsar Bomba, with a yield of 50 megatons, CTNT equivalent. It is possible for a thermonuclear weapon as light as 600 pounds, 270 kilograms, to provide energy equivalent to more than 1.2 megatons of TNT, 5.0 PJ. An entire city can be destroyed by blast, fire, and radiation from a nuclear device that is no bigger than a conventional bomb. The spread of nuclear weapons is a subject of international relations policy because they are weapons of mass destruction. In two separate conflicts, the United States used nuclear weapons against the Japanese cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki in 1945. Types Nuclear weapons can be divided into two categories, those that generate the majority of their energy only through nuclear fission reactions, and those that start nuclear fusion reactions, which account for the majority of the total energy production. Fission weapons Nuclear fission processes are the source of some of the explosive energy used in all known nuclear weapons. Atomic bombs or atom bombs are frequent names for weapons whose explosive power comes only from fission processes, abbreviated as A-bombs. This has long been recognized as a bit of a misnomer because, like with fusion weapons, their energy originates in the atomic nucleus. By firing one piece of subcritical material into another, the gun method, or by compressing a subcritical sphere or cylinder of fissile material using chemically fueled explosive lenses, a mass of fissile material, enriched uranium or plutonium, is forced into supercriticality in fission weapons, allowing an exponential growth of nuclear chain reactions. The latter strategy, known as the implosion method, is more sophisticated and effective than the former, it is smaller, less huge, and uses less of the pricey fissile fuel. Making sure that a large portion of the fuel is spent before the weapon self-destructs is a difficult task for all nuclear weapon designs. Fission bombs can produce energy that is equivalent to between a little under a ton and as much as 500,000 tons, 500 kilotons, of TNT, 4.2 to 2.1106 GJ. The leftovers of the split atomic nuclei, known as fission products, are created in every fission reaction. Fission products are a severe source of radioactive pollution since many of them are either highly radioactive, but transient, or moderately radioactive, but persistent. The main radioactive component of nuclear fallout is fission products. The weapons release of a burst of free neutrons is another source of radiation. The neutrons change the surrounding materials other nuclei into other isotopes when they crash with them, altering their stability and turning them radioactive. Uranium-235 and plutonium-239 have been the two fissile elements used for nuclear weapons applications the most frequently. Uranium-233 has been utilized far less frequently. It is unclear whether neptunium-237 and various isotopes of americium have ever been used for nuclear explosives, and it is debatable whether these materials might be used in nuclear weapons. Nuclear weapons. The majority of the energy used in the other common form of nuclear weapon comes from nuclear fusion reactions. Due to their reliance on hydrogen isotope fusion processes, these fusion weapons are typically referred to as thermonuclear weapons or, more commonly, hydrogen bombs, abbreviated as H-bombs, deuterium and tritium. The majority of the energy used in all such weapons comes from fission reactions that trigger fusion events, and fusion reactions can also trigger more fission reactions. The United States, Russia, the United Kingdom, China, France, and India are the only six nations to have tested thermonuclear weapons. It is debatable whether India has launched a genuine multi-stage thermonuclear weapon. 
As of January 2016, North Korea asserts to have conducted fusion weapon testing, while this assertion is contested. Compared to crude fission weapons, thermonuclear weapons are thought to be significantly more challenging to successfully design and manufacture. The thermonuclear design is used by almost all nuclear weapons currently in use because it is more effective. The energy of a fission bomb is used by thermonuclear weapons to compress and heat fusion fuel. This is done in the Teleulam design, which is responsible for all multi-megaton yield hydrogen bombs by putting a fission bomb and fusion fuel, tritium, deuterium, or lithium deuteride next to each other inside a unique, radiation-reflecting container. Gamma and X-rays released after the explosion of a fission bomb compress the fusion fuel before heating it to thermonuclear temperatures. Massive quantities of high-speed neutrons are produced by the fusion event that follows, and these neutrons can cause fission in substances like depleted uranium that aren't typically prone to it. The fission bomb is the main stage, and the fusion capsule is the secondary, and each of these parts is referred to as a stage. About half of the yield in massive, megaton-range hydrogen bombs comes from depleted uranium's ultimate fissioning. The two-stage architecture mentioned above is used by almost all thermonuclear weapons now in use, however more fusion stages can be added, with each step igniting more fusion fuel in the stage behind it. With this method, arbitrary huge yield thermonuclear weapons can be built. Contrary to fission bombs, which are constrained by the threat of criticality in terms of their explosive power, premature nuclear chain reaction caused by too large amounts of pre-assembled fissile fuel. The Tsar Bomba of the USSR, the largest nuclear weapon ever to explode, was a three-stage bomb that unleashed the energy equivalent to more than 50 megatons of TNT, 210 PJ. Due to practical limitations imposed by the weight and space requirements for missile warheads, the majority of thermonuclear weapons are significantly smaller than this. The man regarded to as the father of the hydrogen bomb, Edward Teller. However, because all thermonuclear weapons contain at least one fission stage and many high-yield thermonuclear devices have a final fission stage, thermonuclear weapons can produce at least as much nuclear fallout as fission-only weapons. Fusion reactions do not produce fission products and as a result contribute much less to the creation of nuclear fallout than fission reactions. Furthermore, high-yield thermonuclear explosions have the power to propel radioactive debris above the tropopause, with ground bursts being the most hazardous. Weapons Transfer Nuclear weapon design and nuclear strategy are both significantly influenced by the technology utilized to deliver a nuclear warhead to its target. For example, they represent 57% of the financial resources used by the United States on nuclear weapons initiatives since 1940. The design, development, and maintenance of delivery systems are among the most expensive components of a nuclear weapons program. A gravity bomb dropped from an aircraft is the simplest way to deliver a nuclear weapon. The United States employed this technique to attack Japan. The size of the weapon is not severely constrained by this technique. It does, however, place restrictions on the attack range, the amount of weaponry a nation may field simultaneously, and the response time to an imminent attack. Nuclear bombs can now be delivered by tactical fighter bombers as well as strategic bombers because to downsizing. The bulk of American nuclear warheads, for instance, are freefall gravity bombs, specifically the B-61, and this technique is the main way that nuclear weapons are delivered. A nuclear weapon installed on a missile that can use a ballistic trajectory to deliver the payload over the horizon is preferable from a strategic standpoint. The development of long-range intercontinental ballistic missiles, ICBMs, and submarine-launched ballistic missiles, SLBMs, has allowed some countries to plausibly deliver missiles anywhere on the globe with a high likelihood of success, though even short-range missiles enable a faster and less vulnerable attack. The likelihood of a successful missile defense is decreased by more sophisticated systems, including multiple independently targetable reentry vehicles, MIRVs, which may fire numerous warheads at various targets from a single missile. Today, among technologies used to deliver nuclear bombs, missiles are the most prevalent. However, it can be challenging to make a warhead tiny enough to fit onto a missile. The widest range of delivery mechanisms have been used by tactical weapons, including artillery shells, landmines, nuclear depth charges, and torpedoes for anti-submarine warfare, in addition to gravity bombs and missiles. The United States has tested an atomic mortar. 
Small, two-person portable tactical weapons, like the Special Atomic Demolition Munition, have been created, but their military utility is limited by the challenge of balancing portability with sufficient yield. Governance, Control, and Law Nuclear weapons proliferation and potential use are significant topics in international relations and diplomacy because they are weapons of mass destruction. In the majority of nations, only the head of state or government has the authority to use nuclear weapons. Nuclear weapons are subject to inherent risks such as accidents, blunders, false alarms, blackmail, theft, and sabotage, despite safeguards and restrictions. The United States and the Soviet Union were unable to move forward on armaments limitation agreements in the late 1940s because of a lack of confidence between them. In the middle of the Cold War, on July 9, 1955, Bertrand Russell published the Russell-Einstein Manifesto in London. It emphasized the risks posed by nuclear weapons and urged world leaders to look for peaceful solutions to global disputes. Eleven famous scientists and thinkers signed the document, including Albert Einstein, who did so just days before his passing on April 18, 1955. A few days after the manifesto's publication, millionaire Cyrus S. Eaton offered to support the meeting at Pugwash, Nova Scotia, the town where he was born. In July 1957, the first Pugwash Conference on Science and World Affairs was scheduled to take place. By the 1960s, measures had been put in place to curb nuclear testing's negative environmental impacts as well as the spread of nuclear weapons to other nations. While the Treaty on the Non-Proliferation of Nuclear Weapons, 1968, attempted to impose restrictions on the types of activity signatories could engage in, with the goal of allowing the transfer of non-military nuclear technology to member countries without fear of proliferation, the Partial Nuclear Test Ban Treaty, 1963 restricted all nuclear testing to underground nuclear testing to prevent contamination from nuclear fallout. The International Atomic Energy Agency, IAEA, was founded in 1957 with the goal of promoting the development of nuclear technologies' peaceful applications, providing global safeguards against their abuse, and facilitating the implementation of safety measures in their usage. The Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty, which forbids the testing of nuclear weapons, was signed by a large number of countries in 1996. Any nation that complies must face a serious obstacle to developing nuclear weapons, a testing moratorium. Before the treaty can enter into force, it must be ratified by 44 particular states. As of 2012, eight of these states' ratifications were still needed. Additional treaties and agreements have governed nuclear weapon stockpiles between the U.S. and the Soviet Union, and later between the U.S. and Russia, the two nations having the two greatest stockpiles. These include non-binding agreements like SALT-I and the Presidential Nuclear Initiatives of 1991, as well as treaties like SALT-2, Never Ratified, START-I, Expired, INF, SORT, and New START. These agreements assisted in limiting and later reducing the amount and variety of nuclear weapons between the United States and the Soviet Union slash Russia, even when they did not go into effect. Agreements between nations have also rejected nuclear weapons. Through the use of treaties, many countries have been designated nuclear weapon-free zones, places where the development and use of nuclear weapons are outlawed. Nuclear weapons are not permitted in many African nations thanks to the treaties of Pelindaba, 1964, and Tlatelolco, 1967, which forbade the development and use of nuclear weapons in Latin America and the Caribbean. A Central Asian nuclear weapon-free zone that forbids nuclear weapons was formed among the former Soviet nations of Central Asia as recently as 2006. The highest court of the United Nations, the International Court of Justice, published an advisory opinion in 1996 on the legality of the threat or use of nuclear weapons. The court determined that using or threatening to use nuclear weapons would be against a number of international legal principles, including the UN Charter, the Geneva Conventions, the Hague Conventions, and the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. The International Committee of the Red Cross urges states to make sure that nuclear weapons are never utilized, regardless of whether they believe them to be legal or not, due to their distinct, destructive nature. Other targeted efforts that aim to deter nations from getting nuclear weapons have also been taken. Economic penalties were, temporarily, imposed on both India and Pakistan after their nuclear tests in 1998, despite the fact that neither nation was a signatory to the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty. The United States claimed that Iraq was actively pursuing nuclear weapons as one of the alleged cases belly for the start of the Iraq War in 2003. 
though this was soon discovered not to be the case as the program had been discontinued. Israel destroyed a nuclear reactor in Osirak, Iraq, in 1981 in what it claimed was an effort to curb Iraq's prior nuclear weapons ambitions. In 2007, Israel targeted a reactor in Syria. According to Mark Diesendorf, in 2013, the governments of France, India, North Korea, Pakistan, the UK, and South Africa have all used nuclear power and or research reactors to aid in the development of nuclear weapons or to supplement their military reactor supplies with nuclear explosives. In 1953, when the U.S. and the Soviet Union started testing hydrogen bombs, the doomsday clock was set to two minutes till midnight. It also reached its lowest point in 2018, when world leaders failed to resolve concerns over nuclear weapons and climate change.